Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to another Disney Lurkana card of the day. I'm Steggy and today's card of the day is going to be Prince Eric, Dashing and Brave. Now, Prince Eric is a steel card. He costs two resources and he is inkable, which again means he can be placed into your inkwell. He has one strength, three willpower, and one lore. He has one ability and it's challenger plus two. And that means when he is challenging, uh, he gets an additional plus two strength. It's basically the same as Captain Hook Forceful Duelist, um, but he costs one more resource and he has one more lore. I'm sorry, not one more lore. He has one more willpower. Initially, I wasn't going to talk about Prince Eric today. I was actually talking about another card, but I wanted to talk about Prince Eric um, because he kind of surprised me. Initially, I wasn't a fan of him. I thought he was like a worse version of Captain Hook. And to be fair, in some ways, he kind of is. Uh, playing a turn one Captain Hook is very scary for your opponent. Because they have to realize that whatever they do, whatever character they play and then quest with for several turns is going to be taken out by that Captain Hook, at least in a one-for-one -one trade. In very, you know, few circumstances, it's going to be a, a two-for-one, where, like, if you play a turn one Maleficent, the, the Amethyst one that has two lore, Captain Hook can trade into that Maleficent and take it out and still have one health or willpower left to fight something else or whatever. But in most cases, you have stuff like Flounder, you have Goons, you have Stitch. Uh, these are characters that have two willpower and they will take out captain hook but they won't take out prince eric prince eric can still be just as threatening yes he comes out one turn later but he is able to trade into every single one drop that we've seen so far and survive there are no other one drop characters that can deal three damage back to prince eric now, Captain Hook, who I just talked about, can do three damage, but only when he is challenging. Yes, Captain Hook can challenge into Prince Eric, take out Prince Eric, and he can survive. So, yeah, bonus points to, you know, Captain Hook again for that. But in every other situation where Prince Eric is the one challenging, he will survive. So, and that means in at most cases, Prince Eric is essentially a two for one. Prince Eric is going to take out one character and then have some, you know, willpower left over. It makes it back to your turn. He can take out something else then. I mean, he'll probably be banished in the process, but he has taken out two characters essentially by himself for the price of one. That's one card to remove two. That's, I think that's, that's pretty heckin' good. But Prince Eric is able to take out, you know, one drops, uh, but then he could also take out these cards like Donald Duck like Minnie Mouse. He could also take out stuff like Jasmine. Um, he can take out Kristoff. He can take on Hercules. You know, he's able to banish these characters as long as he is challenging. If he is not challenging, yeah, it is a bit more rough, but he does have that one extra willpower, which does help him survive attacks that say would banish Captain Hook. Um, and that's that's pretty good. I that's that's not too bad. I actually really like that. The fact that he is inkable as well is just even better because at any point you can always just use him as a resource. And I do really like that feature. I know there are some cards that aren't inkable, like Fire the Cannons and Lady Tremaine. They have really good effects, and you're probably going to want to be using them. I'm not saying Prince Eric doesn't have a good effect because he does. Like Challenger is a really good effect, especially especially early game on his three willpower, you know, stat line. But just knowing that you can always use him for a resource at any point of the game is just really nice. In addition to his combat prowess, um, he is a prince. Um, he has a classification as a prince. We have seen synergies with princesses. That sounded weird to say. Princesses, princesses, princesses. I kind of like princesses. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm just keeping it in. So we have seen synergy with other, you know, tribal cards. So I wonder if we will see something for Prince. I do believe Simba, if I remember correctly, I think Simba is also a Prince. 
I am actually... He, oh, he's a king. I'm sorry. I don't know why I disrespected him so much. Not so much, but disrespected him like that. Simba is a king, so no, he's not a prince. But, uh, oh, Hercules is a prince. The, the point being is I think there might be some sort of tribal synergies with prince. If so, that might make him really good. Steel is already a fantastic color as well. It's a very aggressive color. You can come out fast with goons. In addition to goons, you can play Captain Hook, right? Those are powerful turn one plays. You also can do Fire the Cannons, which is also one resource. Um, your two resources, you have, you know, your Prince Eric coming down. Uh, Smash and Hercules are your three resources. And you have Cap another Captain Hook, uh, the one that's Captain of the Jolly Roger, where he can get your Fire the Cannons back. He comes down for four resources. So Prince Eric has a lot of great support in Steel. But I, I do want to point out, in addition to the Prince Tribal, he only costs two resources. And he can be paired with Stitch, with Rockstar Stitch. He can come down and you can draw a card off of him, at least. If you're playing a sort of Amber Steel deck. Um, that's the deck I like. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, you have stuff like Lanterns and you have stuff... Uh, you have Maximus, you have Be Our Guest, and plus you have the package for um, Captain Hook and Fire the Cannons. Steel has some fantastic cards. Amber is, you know, is really good at gaining lore with like Moana and, you know, Minnie Mouse and stuff with other princesses, Ariel. So I like it. I think it's pretty good. But, you know, Prince Eric, Prince Eric has just surprised me. And I think it's the fact that he has one additional willpower that just makes him pretty good he is going to be really good for like you know turns two three four where he's able to challenge other characters and you know and take them out like other you know bigger characters your opponent might play like jasmine for example well jasmine is a three cost for three strength and three lore she also quests for two lore i'm sorry i said three lore i meant three willpower she quests for two lore. That's quite a bit. I mean, that that's a that's a, a lot. It's more than one, but that two lore adds up pretty quickly. And we see that with the one cost Maleficent. Prince Eric's able to take her out in, in a challenge. Yeah, he'll be banished in return, but he's able to take her out. And I'm just pointing this out because he kind of, you know, punches above his weight class. He's just able to take out a lot of characters. He can take out all the one drops and then... You keep him around for a turn or two, and he can swing up and take out a you know a higher costed character. Um, so overall, overall, like how do I feel about Prince Eric? So I like him. I think he's I think he's pretty good. Is he better in the challenging role early game than Captain Hook? I want to say it depends, but truthfully, I'm gonna say I don't think so. A turn one Captain Hook is still really scary for your opponent to see because that Captain Hook is going to take out something, right? You just got to realize, okay, something's going to be taken out by Captain Hook. Now, a Captain Hook followed up by a turn two Prince Eric, well, yeah, now, now that's not looking good for you. Like, you're going to lose a couple characters. I think Prince Eric really shines against decks that have a lot of, like, turn one, turn two characters that can only deal, like, two or less uh, attack or strength, like, damage in return where he's able to do an effective two-for-one trade. And I think that's where he really shines, is that Prince Eric can be a two-for-one more often than Captain Hook can be a two-for-one. And I think that's his main thing. Uh, he's also a prince, again, I bring this up, but there, there's got to be something with princes. There's got to be some sort of synergy or, or something. I think that'd be really great. If so, I think he's going to be a little better. Overall, like, how do I feel about Prince Eric? You know, you know, is he a worse Captain Hook? Is he a better Captain Hook? So I don't think he's, I don't think he's too bad, actually. I think he is a solid as of right now. I really like him. I th I'm giving him an, like an 8 out of 10, you know, 4 out of 5. I do think Captain Hook's a little better. I'd give Captain Hook like a, like a 9 out of 10 because I, I just really like that Captain Hook. He comes down turn one and you're just like, oh, well, guess I can't quest with something or else I'm going to lose it. But Prince Eric, you might be like, well, maybe, but it's still the same. So it, it would really, it's, he's deceptively good. You might not think so, but uh, yeah, he's good. You know, because everyone talks about Hook, but you don't talk about Prince Eric. I, I like Prince Eric. I think that one extra willpower allows him to survive attacks that say Captain Hook would not. 
So I'm giving him a solid 8 out of 10. He might be a little better, again, in certain decks if there are some sort of like tribal synergies, but um, in like a, a very steel heavy deck, um, yeah, yeah, I, I like Prince Eric a lot. I'm giving him the 8 out of 10. I, I, I think he's good. But again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Make good decisions. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.